Hi there. It is time to move on, change gears, and talk about central forces. A central force is a force that points radially to the center, the source of the force. It depends only on the distance from the source. Gravitational force, electrostatic force, the recovery force of a spring are clear examples of this kind of force. From our old friend, the relationship between the force and the potential, we can write the force uh, as the minus the gradient of V, V in V, the potential associated to that force. But in spherical coordinates, this is negative the derivative of V with respect to R in the radial direction. Here we consider the source of the force to be at the origin. Let's see some particularities of these forces, which, by the way, are widespread in nature. Some of them you already have encountered, although you might not have looked at them from this more general uh, perspective. Let me write first the angular momentum as L equal to the cross product of R and P. You already know that the angular momentum is a vector which is perpendicular to both the R vector and the linear momentum P. Let's now derive the angular momentum with respect to time for a central force. The derivative is dr dt times p plus r times dp dt. This is v times p plus r times f, but now is when the interesting part comes to play. First, the velocity is parallel to itself, so this first cross product is zero. And also, the central force is anti-parallel to r, so the second cross product is also zero. So this derivative is zero for us all central forces. This means that the angular momentum is conserved in these kind of forces, which is a powerful result. Look that we haven't yet talked about any specific central force, and we already know that angular momentum will be conserved. Now, some consequence of this is that because the angular momentum is a conserved quantity, and because the angular momentum is perpendicular to the plane defined by the vectors r and p, this means that the position vector r and the velocity vector v, they are always on the same plane. So the motion of a particle under central force is on a plane. It is a 2D motion. This we know, for example, for the motion of planets, now, I'm going to write the Lagrangian and rewrite it so that the problem at hand gets simplified even more. Because the potential only depends on the distance r, I will write the Lagrangian in polar coordinates. This Corviel will refer to the Lagrangian to differentiate it from the angular momentum regular L. From Lagrange equations, we get these two equations. The first one is F equal to ma in polar coordinates with the centripetal force. The second equation is the conservation of angular momentum, our previous result. Now I'm going to use this angular momentum L and I am going to join these two equations. So mr2 dots is equal to L square over mr3 minus v prime of r, where prime here means the derivative with respect to r. Now let me write the energy of the system, the kinetic plus the potential, where I am going to use the angular momentum to express theta dot in terms of L. And please, let me now derive it respect to time. mr dot r2 dot minus L square r dot over mr cubed minus v prime times r dot. Remember that the potential depends explicitly on r, and r depends on time. But look at this closer. If we factor out r dot, what we have inside the parentheses is just 
the equation from Lagrange would happens to be zero. So now we have that the energy under this central force is also conserved. But there is more than that. Look at the expression for the energy. We can rewrite it as one half of mr dot square plus l square over two mr square plus v over r. What we have here is the kinetic energy, an ineffective potential that only depends on r. This happens to be the energy of a one-dimensional system. We have then written the problem of the motion of a particle in free space, 3D space in a single equation of one-dimensional motion. We can describe the motion of a planet in space as a one-dimensional problem. A particle that moves under an effective potential and an effective force. We will be solving these equations in the next video. May the science be with you.